Today, I'm going to explain to you how to use your consciousness or your imagination to shift to your desired state or reality while remaining physically in your current reality. I'm also going to quote some of Neville Goddard's teachings in which he goes into a detail on how to actually imagine yourself anywhere you want while your senses deny it and thus objectify that state or reality on the screen of space or to shift there physically. I am in this room right now and everything seems so real, more real than anything else in the world. I know this room by reason of my bodily organs. My senses allow it and my reason dictates it. This is fact. All this is real. There is an inner man and he is skilled in arranging things so that they reach to desired ends. Not based upon the evidence of the senses. The inner man by standing here could desire to be elsewhere and deny the evidence of my senses denying reason, dare to assume I am where I would like to be and rearrange the furniture of my mind. Instead of using this to tell me I am here, I use other furniture, objects of my mind. Here I rearrange it and remain faithful to that state until it takes on the tones of reality. And when it seems to be sensory vivid, and I open my eyes upon it, I am shocked to find I am still here. That is the inner man called Jacob, the supplanter. He takes the place of the outer man, Neville Goddard. So Jacob is basically your invisible desire or your desired state or reality that you wish to objectify on your screen of space or make visible in your world. So it's invisible to you at the moment because your outer senses are telling you that you are in your current reality. So your senses deny the evidence of your desire being here right now. Now, instead of using your outer senses to tell you where you are right now, what you need to do is you need to use the objects of your mind or the picture that you see in your imagination as the evidence of that picture already being here. In other words, the key here is to practice using the objects of your mind as the evidence of the fact that you are already in your desired state or reality or to assume that you are already in your desired state rather than using your outer senses as the evidence of you being in your current reality. So let's go over this quote again. Instead of using my outer senses to tell me that I am in this room right now, I use other furniture. I use objects of my mind to tell me that I am where I want to be. And then the key is to remain faithful to that picture in my mind, to what I see in my mind or in my imagination, until it takes on the tones of reality. In other words, I need to loop my imaginal scene until it takes on the tones of reality. And when it seems to be sensory vivid, and I open my eyes upon it, I am shocked to find I am still physically in this room. So the key here is to repeat your imaginal act until you are able to feel the reality of what you want or until you catch that feeling or the mood of the state that you desire to shift into. That is how you exercise your imagination or Jacob. Like I stand here and assume I am elsewhere and I see the world as I would if I was standing there physically. Then I open my eyes to find there isn't any difference and I am shocked I am not actually there. I have gone to prepare a place. Having gone to prepare a place, I returned here. 
but I will now move across a bridge of incidents, a little series of events leading from where I am physically to where I am consciously. So this is how you prepare a place or a reality that you desire to shift into. You go there in your imagination and you mentally feel or sense that reality to the best of your ability. So you remain there until it takes on the tones of reality. So when you are imagining yourself in any particular state or reality, the goal here is to imagine until you catch the feeling or the mood of that state. This is why you need to loop your imaginal scene until it takes on the tones of reality. So you remain faithful to your imaginal scene or state until the feeling of that state or reality becomes natural to you. I can assume I am the man I would like to be. If I dare to remain faithful to that assumption and not waver in it, and to the degree that I am loyal to that assumption, it will crystallize and become a fact. I need not appeal to any person in the world to help me. I can do it all by myself. If I know of the existence of the being in me, who is skilled in arranging things so that it leads to desired end. How would I arrange the furniture of the mind to reach the desired end? But name the end first. The end is where I begin. My end is my beginning. I clothe myself in imagery by rearranging the furniture of the mind, seeing myself and having you see me as I would like to be seen by you. When I see you in my mind's eye, seeing me as you would see me were it true that I am what I am assuming that I am, then I am pre-clothed. Now, to what degree can I fool myself? Can I believe in the reality of that imaginal act? Yes, I've done it a number of times and it worked. Whenever I do it with persuasion to the point of acceptance, it worked and I found my Jacob. This is a very simple story. It's a true story. A man, an engineer, who had never earned 20,000 a year, he had never earned beyond 10. I said to him, where would you work if you made your 20,000? He said, I have picked out the job. They don't know it, but the building is on Madison Avenue. I know exactly the floor. I have ridden up in the elevator. I have gotten off at the floor and walked into the office. I know where I would sit were it true that I work there, where I will hang my hat, and when I take off my coat, where I will put it. I know exactly what I will do. I said, all right, now stand in that elevator and go up, sit, stop at the floor and get off, walk right into the place, take off your hat and jacket, and just simply be natural in the job. Within two weeks, he was on that job at 20,000 a year, Neville Goddard. So basically to objectify any state or reality on your screen of space, you have to enter that state in your imagination and make it natural. You have to make the feeling of being there natural to you. So by feeling any state or reality that you would like to shift into, you give it a reality in your world. You give it a reality on your screen of space. If you can mentally feel or sense a particular state or reality, then that reality already exists. In fact, you are already there. You would not be able to perceive something that does not already exist. In other words, if you can see, hear, taste, touch, or smell your desire in your imagination, then that desire already exists. In fact, you already have that. Because how can you sense something that does not already exist? Now, an idea, which is only a thought, produces nothing. In order to be awakened, motor elements must be employed, for imagination is spiritual sensation. 
Meaning when you imagine, you need to bring all of your senses to bear upon your imaginal act. As an example, imagine a rose. See it in your mind's eye. Feel its velvet petals with your hand. Smell the rose. And you have used three talents or three of your senses, which is seeing, touching, and smelling. Now, if you can detect the fragrance of a rose, see it and touch it, isn't the rose there? If it is not, then why is its fragrance in the air? Neville gathered. Notice how he saw the rose. He felt or touched its petals and he smelled it on the inside. If you can experience it like that on the inside, then it's already there. It's already yours. You could not experience it like that. You could not mentally feel or sense the state or reality which does not already exist. Or you cannot see, smell, or touch the rose that is not there. So it must be there. In other words, how can you see, touch, smell, or feel something that is non-existent? Something that does not exist or is not there. If you have used your talents, as I encourage you to do, the rose will come. I'm not saying it will magically appear in your vase by falling out of the atmosphere, but I'm saying that in its own wonderful way, the rose will be yours. Do not concern yourself as to how the rose or roses will appear. Simply go to the end and dwell there. Neville gathered. So what Neville is saying here is that if you have experienced in this example the rose in your imagination by giving it all the tones of reality, by using three of your senses in this case, which is seeing, touching, and smelling, the rose will appear. You don't need to concern yourself as to how this rose is going to appear or how it's going to come to you. All you need to do is to feel from your desired end. For example, one of the ways you could get a rose or roses is from someone who would feel the sudden impulse to get your roses just to fulfill your imaginal act or to push it on your screen of space. And this is how you objectify any invisible state or reality on your screen of space or make that which is invisible visible to you.